Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. In preparation for what the scriptures call Armageddon, all right, the Valley of the Troops, all right, uh, World War Three. All right, over in the Valley of Yahweh Shapat, Jehoshaphat. All right, when you get the Book of Joel, which we'll get. All right, if it's the Lord's will. All right, there's a series of things that will take place that we should be watching out for that are actually happening. Okay, and uh, one of those things are what? The drying up of the Euphrates River. All right, which can be found in the scriptures. All right. Showing you that the Bible, the Holy Scriptures is faithful and true. All right. As it is written. All right. Um, even Yahweh Shai, what did he say? Right. Because these words are faithful and true. All right. Habakkuk said at the end, all of these visions would speak. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to play this video. I have a few videos uh, that I want to play. Or that I'm going to just, you know, try out. Because I, what I did, I just typed in, you know, Euphrates River drying up. Okay. And, um, you know, people are asking why. <laughs> well, biblical prophecy is why. All right. Because um, the Lord is getting ready to put it in to this beast system. All right. And this is how you know we're at the end. I mean, the Karagma is pretty much here. We can see we're, you know, we're one false flag away from that, you know, um, being a reality of being forced. Okay. You got the, uh, the uproars of the people. All right. The Israelites, the remnant, which is all we care about. They're awakening. All right. At a rapid rate. Okay. There's so much happening that's letting us know. We're right there, all right? Redemption draw up nigh. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Syria's longest river has receded, parching trees and leaving families of local farmers without water to drink. Aid groups and engineers have warned of a looming humanitarian disaster in northeast Syria. Plummeting water levels at hydroelectric dams have led to power cuts for up to 5 million Syrians since January. This comes in the middle of a pandemic and economic crisis. The Euphrates runs for almost 2,800 kilometers across Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. It irrigates swathes of land in Syria and runs through three hydroelectric dams that provide power and drinking water to millions. What did he say? It's happening during a pandemic and hard times already. All right. However, over the past eight months, the river has contracted and increasing the risk of dam uh, turbines grinding, the, uh, grinding to a halt. Experts say that there is an alarming drop in water levels, which has not been witnessed since the dam's completion in 1999. Since January, the water level has plummeted by five meters. It hovers just dozens of centimeters above the so-called dead level. Experts say that power generation has already fallen by 70% since last year across northeast Syria. Two out of three of all portable water stations along the river are pumping less water or have stopped working. Almost 90% of the Euphrates flow comes from Turkey. Syria's Kurds have accused Ankara of holding back more water than necessary in its dams. In June, Damascus urged Turkey to increase the flow immediately. Fresh water supply from the station on another river has been disrupted at least 24 times since 2019. <laughs> this has affected 400,000, 60,000 people. Uh, UN, a UN climate change report released this month found human influence had almost definitely increased the, freq the frequency rather, of simultaneous uh, heat waves and droughts worldwide according to the 2019 global crisis risk right because in some cases you know you have uh particular wells purposely being dried out for the purpose of military 
All right, uh, uh, you know, troops being able to cross over. Okay, you have it, uh, it naturally happening as well, being dried out. All right, but overall, it's the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that is having this happen. And we'll go to it in prophecy. See if we can find another decent one. Now, this one was cool as well. Let me play it. But he's speaking uh, on the possibility of there being, you know, uh, some gold associated with it being dried up. But I don't know too much about that. We'll listen to a little bit of it. There is a river called the Euphrates River in Jordan. Al Rasul Sallallahu tells us, you'll find this hadith in Sahih Muslim, by the way, that the Euphrates River will be channeled into a different direction. So where there was water, will come dry. There won't be water flowing through there. And as a result, a mountain of gold will be revealed. Rasul Sallallahu mentioned gold literally, dhahab, jabal min dhahab. So lots of gold will be revealed. People of the world will fight each other over this. They'll go into battles over this, this gold. He said, don't come near the gold to his ummah, to us. Don't go near it. From every now, I don't know how true that is, but, you know, that could be, a, you know, a, um, a truth that leads to more war. All right. But what you see is that it's, you know, the Euphrates is really drying up. Let's try this one out. You may have thought with all the news about it uh, that the U.S. or the Western U.S. was the only place experiencing an extreme drought. However, you would be wrong. Hello and welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. This time, still speaking about drought, but in a different location of the world. Now you see here, this is one of the end time prophecies from the Prophet Muhammad. The 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 Quran, okay, is a uh, a off copy of the scriptures, man. Okay. It it it's a uh it's it's madness. Okay, it's the lesser. The holy scriptures prophesied of these things before Muhammad was even on the scene. All right, but that's a whole nother argument for a whole nother time. Okay. We're in the Middle East. And at the moment uh, those are the exact conditions that uh, the Mesopotamian region of the Middle East is in with the uh, two big primary water sources, the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, being between 50 and 70 percent See that? below their normal levels. Obviously, the reduced level is different uh, based on where along the point of the river. All right, so let's go to the scriptures. All right, we're going to start here. All right which uh, is going through a series of plagues, you know, that will be put into the earth, all right, in no particular order, <clears throat> all right, but um, we're going to just jump to the point here in Revelation 16 and 12. It says, and the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates, all right, showing you that the angels, all right, have everything to do with what's taking place on the earth, whether it be the uh the mind of the king and what you know the people the rulers and the leaders are doing okay he's putting the spirit on you know uh, various different nations to join you know forces for the purpose of war and coming against babylon okay he's putting the evil thought in the mind of uh gog and magog it's all sorts of things going on all right but remember the angels even us all right even us even this message being preached it's being preached ultimately the angels are dictating it through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's in Revelation the 14th chapter. Okay, this message being preached is coming directly from the heavens, man. All right, so there's particular angels with particular uh, uh, duties because there is order in the heavens. And here is one. And the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates and the waters thereof was dried up. All right, let's look up this word dried up. All right, just to see what John the Revelator saw. All right. Dried up the Greek word. Strong's G, 3583, Xerino. Xerino. There you go. To make dry, dry up, wither, to become dry, to be dry, to be withered. <laughs> and that's what's happening, to waste away. It's pining away. It's withering. Okay. 
So it says, And the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. All right. And who is the kings of the east? Ultimately, Gog and Magog. All right. Because they're going to be bringing military troops. All right. In very strategic places. All right. Now, know that uh, Russia pretty much is a guard over Syria. And when you go in prophecy, it's going to be Russia. All right. Whose uh, influence is going to be key. Okay. In uh, World War Three being uh started all right and these nations having an evil eye towards babylon the great now if you look in recent news all right putin all right uh was pissed off all right at the presence of turkish and foreign troops in syria okay because that's supposed to be their little setup all right that's why uh you know there was friction between russia and babylon the great over the 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 madness they were doing over in syria all right and still are doing all right but that's a whole nother lesson for a, a whole nother time okay so reading this again all right and the sixth angel poured out his vow upon the great river euphrates and the water thereof was dried up as we're seeing that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared and that's an ancient custom okay of preparing a way for a king, all right? So systematically, some of the water is being dried up for the purpose of military, all right, positioning, all right? But the Heavenly Father is drying it up as well in spirit, all right? Even if uh, uh, it is being uh, done by men, it's the Lord putting the spirit on them to do that. Why? Because there's angels over in that area, okay? When you get the uh, book of Revelation, the ninth chapter, Okay. Revelation 9 and 13 and the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before the most high. Saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. OK, so there's heavy, OK, uh, uh, angelic activity going on over there. OK. And they're preparing what war because in that region over in that, you know, over in the Middle East is where the great brawl to end all is going to take place. Armageddon. OK, in the valley of Yahweh Shapat. OK, and we'll get that. It says and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. OK, we're coming up on that time to slay the third part of men. All right. And who are the third part of men? You have the sons of God, okay, which are the Israelites, the chosen seed, the sons of men, which are the heathen nations. And then you have the sons of the wicked, okay? That's the third part of men, okay? And all of this is taking place for their kingdom to be taken down, okay? To end Esau's world, okay? So the Lord is going to use war, all right, and it's going to be an alien, what they call alien invasion, angel invasion, okay, synonymously with all of that going on, okay. So the ways of the kings of the east are being prepared for the purpose of military positioning for the purpose of what? What does it say next? Armageddon, okay. And we'll get the understanding of what Armageddon is. And it says, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. Okay. And that's ultimately the fulfill this beast system. Now, what do they have? They have their uh, military might. All right. Out of D.C. They have their uh, monetary power, which is ran out of uh, London. And then they have their what? Their, their uh, religious wine system, which is ran out of the Vatican. OK, Italy, which is Rome, basically. OK, so what, what what are those three frogs, unclean spirits that have led to what decay in the earth, man, to where the nations are angry? OK, the nations are tired of being uh, ripped off. Everybody's in debt. Everybody's drunk off of the, the, the wine. OK, 
as it says in Revelation 17, the nations are mad, okay, because of this system. All right. Now, when you real quick, let's get Revelation, the um, 20th chapter. To get a little bit more insight on this Revelation 20 and seven. And when the thousand years are expired after the Byzantine Empire, the revival, OK, the Renaissance period, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. All right. Esau, Edom. OK, he who comes to do the bidding of Satan. OK, was ultimately taken out of that low, decrepit state he was in. All right. And he went on to do what? Go out and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. All right. And what is that going to lead to? Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. The number is whom is as the sand of the sea. OK, so their 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 hurtful works are going to lead to world war. Now, if we read this in the NLT, see how it's uh, worded. He go, he will go out to deceive the nations. This is not speaking of a spiritual demon satan this is speaking of the people on the earth the children of the wicked okay who do the bidding of satan okay it says he will go out to deceive the nations all right it says call gog and magog which is russia and that area armenia and so forth in every corner of the earth he will gather them together for battle a mighty army as numberless as the sand of the sea, all right? Now, it mentions Gog and Magog because when you go on prophecy, they're going to be the ones, all right, that are going to, you know, have the mind to gather all of these nations together to come against, all right, this beast system, which is led by Babylon the Great, all right? But, you know, in times past, Babylon the Great had all of its allies on its side, all right. But within the beast system, there's going to be nations operating with Gog and Magog. All right. And all of them are going to turn on Babylon the Great. OK, but let's get this first. Let's read it again. Revelation 16 and 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. All right. And we told you that's their uh, their. Uh, military system their financial system and their uh religious system all right and this gives them a grip on the planet earth like no other power has ever had okay and 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 also controls of the people's minds okay it says for they are the spirits of devils working miracles okay <laughs> they are the spirits of devils working miracles man and this is what gives this beast system its power all right because ultimately they 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 deal directly through the spiritual demon satan okay so they have power like no other empire has ever had on the planet earth that's why a lot of our people don't see any way for us to win through just preaching in the word all right but they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and unto the whole world. And that's what they do. They deride strongholds. Okay. They they burn you. They go they, they go to these different poor nations or, or nations where um you know where they have their setup. And what do they do? They work witchcraft and evil, okay, and undermine the, 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 the leaders, or if the leader there, ultimately if the king there doesn't want to really take on to their agenda, you know, they'll off him, okay, and set up a a, a puppet leader to do their bidding they've done this all around the planet earth for the most part okay and the nations are angry okay that's written in the scriptures okay so he goes forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them together all right to the battle of that great day of the god almighty okay and what is that great day that's armageddon Let's get the book of Joel, the third chapter. The book of Joel, the third chapter. says the nations will be judged. And it's the wickedness of the children of Satan. Okay, that, that's going to lead to this. Okay, their ill and evil and unjust uh, uh, ways of ruling and dealing. Okay, 
as the scriptures say, neither, all right, uh, uh, this man, is the, the soul which is in him is not upright, okay, neither keepeth he at home. So all of these things link, you see? And the Amalekite is at the forefront of it all, okay? <laughs> the so-called Jew. So Joel 3 and 1, because all of this is, is happening so that we be taken out of captivity. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, all 12 tribes, okay? I will also gather all nations and I will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat. Now, let's look this up. Now, here it is. You got men saying we don't know the name of the Lord when his name. OK. Is is is, is not, not not only in this. His name is in many things. His name is in our language. Yahweh the Yath. His name is in Judah. All right. Yahweh praise or praise Yahweh. But then you have men telling you that we don't know the name of the Lord, man. And that's why there's 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 judgments happening to a lot of you men. All right. Yahweh. All right. Yahweh Shapat. Now, we know Shapat means judgment. So this is Yahweh's judgment. OK. So the, the great river Euphrates is being dried up to lead unto this day. You see, Yahweh has judged Yahweh's judgment. All right. He's going to get he's going to gather all of those, you know, armies over there, which ultimately is going to start around the uh, region of Saudi Arabia. OK. As a matter of fact. Let's get this in the book of Joel 2 and 20. It says, but I will remove far off from you the northern army. All right. Which is Babylon the great. OK. And drive him and will drive him into a land barren and desolate. All right. And we already know they have major troops over in uh, the region of Saudi Arabia. OK. With his face towards the East Sea. OK. And his hinder part towards the utmost sea. All right. Now we pull up a map here real quick. OK. Let's read this again all right but i will move far off from you the northern army okay babylon and greats military and will drive him into a land barren and desolate and they've been over there right and this is that barren and desolate land with his face towards the east sea and the east sea is the euphrates river all right which pours out here into the persian gulf all right i typed it in okay does the uh, Euphrates River flow into the Persian Gulf? It says originating in the Armenian highland of eastern Turkey, the Euphrates River flows through Syria and Iraq to join the Tigris, all right, and the uh, Shat al Arab, which empties into the Persian Gulf. Okay, and if you look at the map we have pulled up, oh, all right. <laughs> You can see it right here, okay? Right there. All right, so this is that. What does it say? But I will remove far off from you the northern army, Babylon the Great's military. And what did he do? He put the spirit on them to drive them into a land barren and desolate, Saudi Arabia. All right, we know the history of that, or you can look it up, and they're still over there, okay? Working wickedness with his face towards the East Sea, okay? And the East Sea is ultimately the Euphrates River, all right, which pours out here into the Persian Gulf, all right? And his hinder part towards the utmost sea. The utmost sea is the Red Sea, okay, right here, all right? This is ultimately the Valley of Decision, and this area is where things are going to, you know, hardcore get popped off, Okay? And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he have done great things. All right. The Lord is going to take down you Edomites. OK, all of you heathen are going to basically have a brawl for it all, man. Let's get the book of Isaiah 34 real quick. All right. So all of this is happening, you know, for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to be magnified. 
all right, and also for, you know, the deliverance of the children of Israel, man. Okay? This is uh, Isaiah 34 and 1. Come near, all ye nations, come near and hearken, ye people. Let the earth and all that is therein, the world, and all the things that come forth of it. All right, what does it say? God's wrath against the nations. For the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations, and his fury is upon their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. They're going to destroy each other. And there's going to come a point where they're going to, you know, the chariots are going to come. They're going to all leave off from the fight they're having with each other and try to fight, you know, the second coming of who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. That's in prophecy. But they're going to be delivered to the slaughter. It says their slain shall also be cast out and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. Right. And the mountain shall be melted with blood. All right. With their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, which is synonymous with Revelation, the sixth chapter. OK, the, the great and dreadful day and all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off the vine as the falling from a fig tree. All right. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment, which are you Edomites. Okay, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord got something coming for you Edomites, man. Okay, but going back to the book of Joel, so we have Yahweh Shapat, the Valley of Decision. Okay, and we'll go back to Revelation, the 16th chapter to end it off. Okay, but uh, reading it again, Joel 3 and 2, for I will gather all nations and bring them down into the Valley of Yahweh Shapat. And when you go and look it up, OK, you can just look up how many armies are in the Middle East. You know, how many armies are in the, the area of Saudi Arabia? Look these things up. OK. And there's a, a bunch of them. Why? Because prophecy is being fulfilled. What did the Lord say? <laughs> I will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat and will plead with them there for my people is uh, for my people and my heritage Israel. This is all happening. All right, for, for our sakes, man. First and foremost, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, whom they have scattered among the nations and have parted my land. The Lord is fed up with you, heathen. And the time of the Gentiles is just about up. Okay? It says, and they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine. So they, these are these heathen have trade, you know, you know, had slave trades. They've lived off the high horse off of, you know, trading us off and our downfall, man. Okay. Jumping down to verse nine. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. All right. And that's what's happening. All of these nations are, are, are gathering, you know, military might. And here it is. You got Babylon and great trying to dictate who has what and what what this what this nation, especially what it, when it comes to Iran. Right. But the weak are now saying I'm a strong countries that would never stand up to Babylon are now cursing this place out. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause thy little ones to come down. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. And this is where we are. We're almost there to that point. All right. Now we know before this point, the chip is going to be administered. Civil unrest, hell. Okay. All sorts of judgments going to be going out. Then World War Three, where the Lord is going to break up their 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 new world order, man. OK. So going back to the book of uh, we were at Revelation, the 16th chapter. And there's so many other scriptures we can go to. All right. But for the sake of just getting to the point. All right. Let's see. Where were we? Armageddon. You see. <laughs> oh, man. So. 
Revelation 16 and 14, for they are the spirit of devils, man. All right, working all sorts of wickedness all over the earth, and people are waking up to them, man. And ultimately, the Lord is just preparing a judgment for all of the wickedness. Just think of all of the wickedness that came from those three unclean spirits. Just think of the wickedness that came from what the Rothschilds did with the, you know, the, the fractional reserve banking out of London. It pretty much has the, 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 the whole world in captivity, in debt. Okay? Because all things flow through them, man. Okay? Uh, uh, the, the wickedness that that that's the U.S. military has done. This beast system, period. The evil. How many? How many? You know, innocent, so-called innocent. Because the scriptures say, you know, whoever perish being innocent. But you get my 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 gist. You know, people who did them no wrong. Well, I, I think, like the scriptures say, woe to thee that spoilest, and thou was not spoiled. And that's what these people have done. You know, uh, the Roman Catholic Church. They're their so-called spiritual sect, right? Where they, they and, and it is spiritual because they work directly through the spiritual demon Satan on the left hand side of the most high to get prophecy to, to for the purpose of evil being set up on earth. But imagine look how many life they lives they destroyed. So their influence is leading to World War Three being prepared, all right, in the to gather them together for the great day of the, the God Almighty. All right. Revelation 16 and 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Behold, uh, blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. OK, so right now is the time, you know, uh, uh, the scriptures say, hey, we we got to, you know, cover ourselves, you know, with the. Uh, How is it worded? All right. We got to cover ourselves with the covering of your Bashim Yashai. Put on the full armor. OK. Lest he walk naked and you have a lot of men walking naked and they see his shame and your sh a lot of you shame is being seen in the form of you getting cut, called out by the prophets. And then ultimately your shame is going to be seen by your judgments and judgments are happening. And none of us are exempt. So we all have to what? Look, the Lord is getting ready to come fast, man. Once these, these prophecies start to hit. All right. It's going to be like. So we got to be ready in spirit. Blessed is he that watch and the keep of his garments, lest he walk naked. Because there's only so much carnal preparation you can do. You can have all of the rice and beans hid and stocked up you want. Okay, the, the gold and silver. Yeah, you can have that. But then what? Okay, when the system collapsed, you, you, shh. all right, well, you, you, may, you may get rounded up. Away from your food and away from all of these things you 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 uh you know gathered. Then what? It's gonna be about the spirit in you. Okay. So your garments are synonymous with the spirit you're in. Okay. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Okay, let's look up the word Armageddon. <laughs> okay. Hill or city of Megiddo, okay? When you look it up in the Hebrew, place of crowds, okay? Place of crowds, man. Har all right, hill, mountain. And it's ultimately a place where, where great judgment is going to take place, man. So the Euphrates River is drying up. Where you were looking, the rivers originate in Turkey, up in the mountains, and flow down through Syria and then through Iraq, where they provide the, uh, the various populations water supplies and also their irrigation water for their farming. Most of it is regional subsistence farming. It's not like the uh, California Valley where you can wave off a fair bit of it as, uh, as industrial farming. No, these are not uh, large corporations growing nuts and other things for nasty tasting dairy replacements in quotation mark. Ultimately, the earth is working against you devils, man. All right. For the purpose of judgment, you see. <laughs> Still 
mind when I mention West Asia? Conflict, regional rivalries maybe? Today we are focusing on another issue that is plaguing West Asia and that's climate change. Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. Israel and Jordan have been engaging in drought diplomacy over scarce water resources, while Kuwait is converting the world's largest tire dump into a city. The Euphrates has been the cradle of civilization in West Asia. The river has been the lifeline for millions in Iraq and Syria for thousands of years. But now it has sunk to a historic low, sparking the region's worst water crisis in years. Our next report tells you more. The mighty Euphrates River used to near Haled al Hamis's farm. But now the river is only visible from a distance. The crops have been destroyed due to the lack of irrigation. Even worse, the farmer's family has been left without drinking water. And this is a plague as well. It's a plague. You see? We are completely deprived of drinking water. The women have to walk seven kilometers just to get a bucket of water for their children to drink. al Hamid is among millions of Syrians who depend on West Asia's longest river, Euphrates. Water levels in the river have hit record lows. Neighboring Iraq has also been affected. Both Iraq and Syria have been dry countries. Despite this, the current drought is unprecedented. Rainfall has declined by 70%. Environmentalists are calling it the region's worst water crisis in years. 12 million uh, people oh, in Syria Lord. and Iraq are struggling with this. Uh, it's like they are everywhere, man. Goodness gracious. Uh, the worst uh, water crisis in years that we have seen. So um, especially this is, you know, the, the water table is at its lowest. 70% less rainfall, and this has really wide ramifications for, uh, for health. Um, it has wide ramifications because drinking water isn't safe. The issue is not limited to drinking water shortage. Critical facilities like hospitals are at risk of facing power outages. This, as the drought, is threatening to bring hydroelectric power plants to a halt. Power shortages affect people's lives and forces them to use fuel oil. In addition, in the summer when it's hot... Yeah, you heathen are getting ready to be judged, okay? Well, there you go. Revelation 16 and 12, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Okay? And we know it's going to be headed by, what, Gog and Magog, Okay, you know, uh, Babylon, of course, is going to be there, you know, but all of these armies are going to be being gathered. Okay, in, in, in these regions for what? War. We're getting ready to get the hell up out of here. So hopefully I'll edify it on to the next. Shalom.